Soon and very soon We are gonna kill the king Tell us story, hold it trans and trust the land in the fifth is brand in the third revolution called by the tail I order Jimmy Fly slaughter side I call the right so a Facebook post from a fellow member of the black American nation today that read simply Stop telling niggas to read Marx. Why? Why would we not want to read Marx? Because he was what we would consider white in the United States? If Marx was good enough for Mao Zedong, Samara Michelle, Thomas Sankara, Maurice Bishop, Ho Chi Minh, and dozens of other non-white revolutionaries that black people admire, love, and respect up to this very day, why should we not study him? Greetings YouTube, this is The Garage Autonomist. Since the ending of a crazy work schedule back in March and then finishing the spring semester of school and the usual domestic stuff, I found myself a bit uninspired in making videos of my own, despite the fact that this country has now achieved fascist state level one by having concentration camps and having inner city facilities as well. Then there's the reversal of women's reproduction rights and part-time neo-Nazi full time cops parading in the streets. What I've been doing of late is a lot of reading and watching other YouTubers who I'm excited about and I want to talk about one in particular. I'm posting in the low bar a link to a YouTube channel that I haven't had a chance to give a shout out to, and that would be Black Red Guard. I've been listening to this brother's channel, I want to say since late 2017 or so. Before people start going into caping for whatever ideological attachment or guiding life, sect, whatever the fuck it is, that rather what we on the left lovingly call sectarian bullshit. I guess there's something else that I don't believe I've ever conveyed over the three years that I've done this channel. And that is that I haven't given a fuck about who your guiding light is or what strain of communism you might uphold as long as you are doing the work in your community that leads to people organizing for independent and radical resistance to capitalism, white supremacy, sexism, or rather oppression. I refuse to not work with someone because they call themselves a Maoist, Trotskyist, or Marxist-Leninist, and by some extent, even a patent pearl liberal. And when it comes to the Black Red Guard, his political framework, experiences, and criticisms of a range of topics, they are usually spot on. While he did a video on anarchism a while back, there are some points he made that you can't deny about left anarchists, such as the lack of political work and community presence. It doesn't mean he's 100% right when I know there are anarchists, and some of them I know personally, who have done work in rebuilding homes in New Orleans after Katrina. But for the most part, the posturing and online nesting of most anarchists, he is definitely correct about. But you can say that about a lot of other leftists. There are a lot of topics that Black Red Guard's videos touch on, but I would suggest the very recent interview that featured Black Red Guard on another channel called Non Compete. Now, I've recently unsubbed from Non Compete, but I'm not going to go into the reasons as to why at this time. But Non Compete's host and his co host did a fairly decent job interviewing Black Red Guard, and he was a natural communicating his ideas and stood solid on his positions, which is why I would start with that hangout before diving into Black Red Guard's channel as an essential introduction. However, the conversation did get a little long. The link to that interview is in the low bar, as well as some of my favorite links to BRG's videos that I think are essential. One of the more recent videos Black Red Guard did was to cover the topic for a need of a community base in working class communities. That video was titled, The USA Has Concentration Camps and the Left Ain't Ready. He mentions what inspires his ideas on this, among other things, was a book that I'm currently reading called Jackson Rising, The Struggle for Economic Democracy and Black Self-Determination in Jackson, Mississippi. I've been reading the book off and on since May, so but up until that point, my progression was very slow. But now that I'm in a solid break, I can really get back to reading it. The book was co-written by Kali Akuno, an activist and organizer with Cooperation Jackson and Ajamu Nangwaya who covers the building of institutions rooted in community power that combine politics and economic development into an alternative model for change while addressing real immediate needs of the people. Basically, these collection of essays 
talk about how a collective of people can not only build social movements that address an array of issues typically confronted by the working class people of color, such as police brutality, gentrification, landlord harassment, etc., but dually building an independent social ecosystem that could provide a community's own food, technology, and self-defense. If this sounds somewhat familiar to what the Panthers were doing, you would be correct, as well as other historical instances. Now, Kalia Kuno has been quoted from his appearance as a guest on a December 2017 airing of Democracy Now!, hosted by Amy Goodman. And he was saying that Jackson is in a place where it's been deindustrialized some 30, 40 years ago where capitalism is at right now. It's not aiming to produce any new jobs. So we're starting with what are the things that we can do within our community, within the resources that exist to improve the quality of life. And that starts with organizing ourselves. If we don't help ourselves, no one else is coming. So how do we take resources we have, pull them together and create a new system? And right now, what we've really been concentrating on is really trying to create somewhat of a closed loop on doing urban farming, some minor food production with the cafe and catering co-op and doing some regenerative work in terms of recycling, composting, and lawn care. Those things are the kind of the basis or the anchor of our kind of revolving network where they support each other and waste being transformed into organic matter, which then helps to stimulate food production. They're all sharing in common resources and common income in such a way that boosts that particular economy and creates some jobs. Kalio Kuno went on to say that we're trying to draw existing resources within the community, but there is a tremendous amount of talent. So trying to organize folks to do autonomous development, starting with the basic skills that we have first around agriculture and around digital fabrication, what we call community production, and really trying to link those to be able to create as much as possible a solidarity economy. Kuno further explains what solidarity economy is. Uh, He says that to develop relationships that are not mediated by the logic of capital, it means I don't view my engagement with you or anyone else as purely transactional, that both of us have, when we come to the table, some intrinsic value, and we should find ways to exchange as equals within that relationship. So I don't reduce everything down to how much money you have in your pocket or how much money I have in my pocket, but I try to create a dynamic where we're sharing, we're continuing a process of being in solidarity with each other to meet both of our individual needs, but more importantly, a communal need to try to move people out of long-term exploitative relationships, unquote. Now, as I said, the book goes into more detail of these ideas. When I you know, get a chance. I'll actually do a separate video as a book review. The link will be in the low bar for the book Jackson Rising, The Struggle for Economic Democracy and Black Self-Determination in Jackson, Mississippi. But all this to say that Black Red Guard in his video titled The USA Has Concentration Camps and the Left Ain't Ready, he talks about how one way we could counter Trump's announcement of uh, rounding up migrant workers back in late June and now reported conditions of the ICE detention centers by building bases of revolutionary power in working class communities. In the United States today, um, base building, I would think, is comprised of uh, various economic and political forms of development, okay? Cooperation Jackson in Jackson, Mississippi is very good at this type of thing. And I've studied them in depth. I I recommend a book by Kali Aquino, Acuno, um, and I have it. I don't have it with me right now, but it's uh, very good. I'll link a link to it in uh, the comments. But these types of things are very important because you have to develop an actual economic base, okay? Resisting gentrification, resisting developers coming and tearing up our communities is not something that you can do with signs and uh, loud voices, okay? So... I've been doing some research, and it's very important that leftists actually investigate actually physically owning properties in their communities. And I've discussed this with a lot of other New African uh, comrades, anarchists, and what have you. And this is a very solid strategy because when you own something, 
or when your organization actually owns physical property in the community, whether it be the lot on which your community garden sits or an actual building that you can use for uh, housing or for events, this is a, a step in the self-determination development process, okay? These things are built. They are just declared um, with with words, okay? So, we got to own shit. We have to look at not investing, that's a bourgeois term, but actually either seizing or raising funds to purchase our own community centers, our own community gardens, and things of this nature, because this shows to the masses that we are serious about what we're doing. We are serious about building an alternative structure, because when you declare a base area, and a base area is not just, oh, we work here. No, a base area is actually something that you defend with armed force, and where the old state has been forcibly evicted. So, to build the nascent or the newborn new power, you have to actually occupy space. And in St. Louis, we've taken a pretty critical step towards this process by, we have one community garden, and right now we are currently trying to get an actual physical building to use as a community center and to use as a revolutionary library and to basically turn over to the um, development of the Revolutionary Movement of St. Louis. And comrades in Jackson obviously have already done this. And comrades in various other cities, uh, New African comrades, are in the process of doing this. Uh, Rockford, Illinois is an area to keep an eye on. Places like Detroit, Atlanta, um, I believe in New Atlanta, the New Black Panthers have recently acquired a house as well for um, single, mother, single mothers and um, their coordinating their efforts. And the Black Panther Party was uh, very good at this. They had like actual physical spaces, offices that they controlled and where people knew, okay, if we want to see the Panthers, if we want to talk to them about organizing against something, we want to join the party, they're down here and they have office hours and they do their work out of this space. We have to actually start building physical bases. I've written about this and I've spoken about this in a prior video. We have to actually start securing turf that we can call our own. At this point right now, where can leftists say that migrants can go to be safe? Sanctuary cities aren't shit, okay? Those are uh, basically the equivalent of putting we are nice to people on a billboard. That does not mean anything concrete. Leftists, communists have to be concrete. We have to gain the trust of the masses, of the people, not with words. Words are a dime a dozen. And when you keep saying, we're going to do this after the revolution, you're basically the equivalent of the evangelist or street preacher saying it's going to be heaven and hereafter. Let's build heaven here and now. Where are our underground railroad networks? Where are our networks of safe houses? Where are our comrades who are capable of transporting our migrant comrades to places where they are going to be relatively safe. We have to build up our own apparatus. And St. Louis is trying to do it with the Red House. Basically, all these crumbling vacant buildings right outside my window. Let's get one and build it up and use it as a sort of a revolutionary community center. Let's build community gardens so that people don't have to rely on who it is uh, supermarkets that sell weak old expired produce to people who don't have any other options okay so people's confidence is not won over by talk about some mythical revolution that will only happen when when you agree with our line people are won over by tangible concrete results where is your building how can you help me get my rent reduced can you help me fix my car can you help me get the work on time? I'm having a problem with my boss. Can you help me? If you cannot do these things, if you cannot offer these things to people, they are not going to follow you. Same with migrants. How are you going to stop our migrant comrades from being deported?
So basically, I just wanted to give his channel a shout out and encourage you all to check out his channel. Peace. This is the Garage Autonomist.